<laughs> and what was it that inspired you or, or, or pushed you over the hump to want to do that? Well, I think it was just that I knew a lot of people. I'd met people who were in the military. My brother was in the military. And it was really just, the, frankly, it was the excitement of the time. And every, other nurses were going in. And uh, I wanted to join, I wanted to be a flight nurse, if you want to know the truth. <laughs> and why, why is that? What is there different about being a flight nurse versus? It just interested me more. Uh -huh. I'd never been on a plane. <laughs> so you weren't one of those ones that were afraid of flying or? No, I, I, but I never had flown, but I wasn't afraid of it. Okay, okay. Um, where were you assigned? I was assigned to Miroc Air Force Base, California, in the Mojave Desert. Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. And of, of what your, tell us what your job was exactly. Well, I was a general duty nurse. We took care of soldiers and who were injured or ill, and uh, we also learned to march. <laughs> we were out on the sand marching and drilling because there were doctors and nurses. Uh, who had never done either one, and learned to salute, and we had, had minimal training right then and there. So it was kind of fun, yeah. Um, of your job that you had to do, what was the most challenging aspect? There, at Iraq? Overall, over, 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 throughout, over. throughout the whole war, really. Oh, throughout the entire war? Yeah. I would say making the right decisions when there was a any kind of a crisis for a patient. That's always, I think, the most serious. Along those lines, if you could give some advice to the current generation of nurses or the next generation of nurses, when it comes to making important decisions under pressure like that, what tips would you give them? Oh, I'd say really pay attention when you're in school <laughs> or any time when you're practicing any kind of a procedure because I look at what they're doing now and I think, oh, I wouldn't be prepared. So. Was, <clears throat> was there a group of people that you got close to in your work? Did you know that you all worked together real well? Well, I said we went through flight training. In fact, the person sitting here was uh, in the same class as I was, flight training class, you know, in back school. and. Uh, Actually, we, we flew individually, so we did not. Our technician we worked with, primarily, on flights. I had a very good technician, and uh, so he always flew with me, whereas there wasn't any other nurse who ever flew with us at any time. But I did get to know my, my roommates and my friends in uh, England, particularly, because that's where we were stationed. Okay, we're in England. I was at Welford Park, one of the many 9th Air Force bases, and uh, we were the 815th Medical Service Squadron. Um, was it, I guess, you know, I don't know the words, challenging or, or just difficult to talk to the young men when they were so badly hurt or did you know what to say to them or were you trained how to handle that? You know, when you're young, you, I think you have that <laughs> confidence to, to speak to people and talk with them. Uh, I might be more comfortably than I might even now knowing the, the future of that person. Uh, the person, the fellows who were seriously injured, let's say in a tank fire, were completely wrapped. And you know, you, you couldn't talk to them anyway. You could reassure them. But uh, I don't feel that I had a problem. So I never was on one of those plane trips where the doctor and the nurse had many, many, many seriously injured patients. Uh, well, how much of this wartime experience or did it at all impact the rest of your life? Well, the service certainly impacted the rest of my life. My best friends for the rest of my life <laughs> were two nurses, particularly the two who uh, I was friends with all these years. Uh, 
They're both gone now. I should have expected. But I, uh, I joined. I eventually joined the Air Force Reserve. I mean, I joined the Army Reserve, uh, and then transferred to the Air Force Reserve when I was recalled during Korean War. I transferred to the Air Force. Period. <laughs> So that so, was yeah, of it is a, a good experience. It always made a great deal of difference in my life. And I'm retired Air Force Reserve. Yeah. Um, what would you say of, of your time in World War II? What was, what was the most rewarding, would you say, or most important thing that happened that, you know, Well, I think probably the most rewarding was getting those wounded soldiers back to England from France. Because when we did take uh, soldiers from Naples, let's say to Casablanca, or even from New York, to, from Paris to New York, they were many times uh, not as seriously injured, of course, many times. I've taken kids who were too young, and they discovered by the time they got overseas that these boys shouldn't be there. And when we had, uh, uh, you know, let's say we had to part, part of the people were injured and others might just be, you know, riding ambulatory. So the ambulatory patients were interesting, but they weren't seriously injured. Yeah. What does a, um, what do the nurses do to relax or a time of, you know, I don't know, rejuvenate themselves or what, you know, whatever. What, when we were in... Yeah, when you were in service and... Well, we were, well, when we were in England, we were really... We happened to be living in a, what was almost a, a, a chalet or a, a beautiful country home. And we had uh, all had bicycles. <laughs> and when we were waiting for the invasion, we did a lot of bicycle riding. Uh, we had a local area where they would take us fishing and we went up to a uh, bomber base for three weeks where we were preparing to help any of the injured, so, you know, airmen and pilots when they came back. So happened I never had to assist. But then we, we were just doing what we could do up there. We also had a little clinic that we worked on near the base where we took care of some British patients as well as American. And they were so grateful because they just didn't have the care that we did, I don't think. <laughs> they didn't receive the money that we our soldiers did. They were very grateful. It seems like they've mm -hmm. always been grateful to our guys coming and helping, and they were equally as grateful for the uh, military nurses helping. Well, this particular little... Uh, a British airman was from Scotland, and he gave me a little, uh, little address book, the Scottish plan on the outside. I still have it, <laughs> and a little book of Burns poems. <laughs> yeah, and he and he was so sweet because we could we could just give him more attention than he would get otherwise. I think. Yeah. Oh, the British people were very uh, kind to us, very receptive. We went to London. And uh, it's still one of my favorite cities because <laughs> I've been back. I was going to ask if you'd been back. Twice. Again. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Once with my husband and then once with a friend yeah. in January. And do you go back to where you all bicycled and go yeah. and look at yeah. that? Yeah, oh. with my husband I did. He drove and uh -huh. we went back there, went to the local pub. The base was still there, as a matter of fact. Uh, and it was being used as for storage of... Uh, various weapons, I'm afraid to say. <laughs> You're like, dang. <laughs> um, okay, when you think of your military service, what, what is, is one of the first things that comes to your mind when you think back on that? You mean total? Well, probably more. World War II. The World War II. World War II. Yeah. Well, I think probably the... Uh, The experience I had bringing the wounded back to you know to wherever they were going or or wherever they could be taken care of 
and also the friendships I made. We really have a very, made very close friendships. Someone asked me once what he'd missed not being in the service, and I said there is a certain camaraderie about the service that I haven't found any place else in my life. That's the truth. After I was married, there were six of us. There were six couples in the Chicago area. We used to get together, and there was another couple where the husband who had gone in in Normandy, and we would all get together on any one of those special occasions, uh, and you know, enjoy whatever we were doing. <laughs> Did most of the men they also were they had also served? Uh, my husband had served in the Air Force, but he had a, a 2200I which meant that he was very limited right. and he became a little discouraged and got out when he could. <laughs> you were saying before about, because we never know exactly what what theater generally we know, but the specifics, when you were saying that you were flying, your most memorable, flying guys from France to England, mm -hmm. was that after a particular battle, Battle of the Bulge, D-Day, or, or just... Well, we did carry people back after the Battle of the Bulge. And I once took a flight with my boyfriend at the time to take gasoline over there when they needed it so badly for uh, for the you know the, the tanks and so forth to, to progress. What was the mood like during the battle? We've talked with some guys in, who were in England and they were grounded; they couldn't get up into the air. Yeah. What what was the mood like at the beginning and as it went through that battle? Well, I think people were kind of apprehensive and. Uh, I can remember, I think it was winter time. It was, yeah. Terrible. Right around Christmas. Yeah, it was really bad. Even the trees in, in, in our area. It can be warm, you know, in England in the springtime. When I went over that one time in January to go back, it was comfortable. Hmm. Really, you know, just a light coat. But it was very cold in, in England at the time, too. So I think we were just all very concerned. Well, it, 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 there certainly wasn't... I wouldn't imagine a belief that the, it was going to turn the war, but the casualties were certainly bad. Oh, it was awful. Yeah. yeah. And I've seen that on television lots of times. What do you tell to a young man who's coming back from something like that, whether he's got frostbite or whether he's got a, a, a bullet wound or whatever? Does a young lady talk to him to encourage him to give him hope? Give him hope to, to the future? Yes. Yeah, I would hope so. I would hope so because they can be treated certainly now, uh, and they they have such wonderful treatments compared to what you had uh, previously. Un unfortunately, every war does produce some miraculous advances yeah. in treatment. Needed? What is it? Necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say to um, a, a a nurse? In the military nowadays, what what kind of advice could you give a young somebody twenty one years old doing what you had done, and you know it's just a mothering device, mothering advice. Well, I would say take advantage of the, of the opportunities for education. Yeah. I met a nurse not too long ago who uh, had, uh, I think, obtained a, a bachelor's as well as a master's. You know, just being in the Air Force, and you can then you can go to all the special schools too. You, you not only add to your own knowledge, but you uh, advance in the Air Force. 